the seven steps that you can take to improve the performance of your Google search campaign. That's what we're gonna be showing you in this video. My name's Alana from teachtraffic.com and I'm gonna walk you through a live Google search campaign and show you each of those seven steps to improve the performance. And make sure you stay to the end of this video because at the end, I'm gonna show you a very, very simple tweak I made that transformed the performance of this campaign and I'm gonna show you the results of that so you definitely do not wanna miss that. So let's go ahead and dive right into our account and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so here we are in a live Google ad account. We are currently going to, I'm gonna show you how to optimize a Google search campaign. But just to be clear on what we're doing, we're running a Google search campaign to advertise a retargeting challenge. So this is a course that teaches people how to create a retargeting campaign on Facebook and Google. So my Google search campaign is getting in front of people who are Google searching, you know, how to create a retargeting campaign on Facebook or retargeting campaign on Google, uh, retargeting course, etc. So they're exactly the type of people that I'm trying to get in front of. Okay, so first thing I do, the first thing you want to do when you log into your um, and look high level at your account is to see if it's profitable, okay? That's like the big picture metric. And as somebody who's run an agency for a very, very long time, the number one metric that as an agency owner we live and breathe by is this cost per conversion metric here, cost per conversion. So here I can see for this particular time period, I am acquiring sales at $79.50 per sale. So I've had four sales at a cost per sale of $79.50. So although this course sells for $10 or it had sold for $10, um, many people upgrade to the full membership, which costs $99 at the time of this recording. So this is <clears throat> more than profitable. Okay. So that's the first thing I need to look at. Uh, is this campaign profitable? And if it is, even if it is, we always look to improve and the rest of this video is going to explain steps that you can take to uh, ideally reduce this cost per conversion and ideally improve your click-through rate and conversion rate. They're the two other metrics you really want to focus on. So since this campaign is profitable, the next thing you want to look at is the status here. So here it says it's limited by budget. Google's telling me, hey, Alana, we want to spend more, but you've put the handbrake up. You've only set a budget of $25 a day. So if I'm comfortable with this profitability metric, then by all means, I might increase my budget. So that's the second thing that you want to have a look at. So if I am happy, I click this and maybe I make it uh, $35 just as an example. Okay. If it's not profitable, you may not want to increase your budget just yet. You might want to look to improve the performance, which as I said, we're going to go through in the following steps. But yes. And you might want to look to increase budget later. All right. So let's go into the campaign and we have a bunch of different ad groups. So the second, the third thing I want you to look at is what's called the search term report. So if I go into one of the campaigns, there is a discrepancy between the keyword that you are bidding on. So this is the keyword I'm bidding on, the single keyword retargeting, Google retargeting, Google remarketing, remarketing campaign on Google, etc. So the discrepancy between the keyword I'm bidding on and what somebody actually typed into Google. Okay, so that's why this search term report is uh, so important to look at. This is a treasure trove of gold information. And if high level, I walk you through uh, what this is telling me. Essentially, I rank by impressions. So this is where the volume of traffic is. And I can see for the search term RSLA, which they've got it backwards, <laughs> Uh, 31 people typed that into Google. I didn't get any clicks, so I haven't paid anything, but that is the most amount of searches um, for this particular term. Then RLSA has got 25 impressions. So really I'm looking for, I'm looking at two things when I look when I look in here. I'm looking for where the volume of traffic is. And I, I'm really looking for uh, negative keywords to add. So am I showing up for the wrong thing? So if I scroll through here, I could have a look at this one. Let's say define remarketing. That's somebody who looks wanting a definition. Okay, I'm not really after people who, wanted, who want a definition of remarketing. I want people who are looking for help with it. All right, so I might add define 
as a negative keyword. Now, if I click this and go add as a negative keyword, Google's a bit sneaky here. It's going to add it as a negative exact match keyword, and I don't want to do that, all right? So um, what I can do is I can just take out um, those uh, square brackets and also remarketing, and I can add, and I want to add a negative keyword as broad match. I don't want any syntax around it. So I can just do it that way here. Or if I cancel it, because I want to show you the other way, I'm going to deselect this. I'm going to go to my negative keywords tab and I'm going to go to the plus icon here and I'm going to write in define, which is just the same way of doing it. But I want to add this at a campaign level because I want this to be applied to all the ad groups in this campaign. Okay. Which is why I want to add it at a campaign level. And then I click save. Okay, so then I want to go back to my search term report and I really want to keep doing the same thing. Okay, so yeah, you just have, so Salesforce would be another poss possible negative keyword. And uh, yeah, so you, you do basically just go through that process. It's kind of like playing whack-a-mole, right? Where you're just saying, no Google, no Google, no Google, I don't want this. The other thing I want to do is I want to rank by conversions to see where my leads are coming from. Now, unfortunately, Google are not telling me. Let me just have a look at a campaign level. And even though I did get sales as by the, the yellow, I mean, yellow, the red line here, they're not telling me. So they, they've hidden it from me, which is super annoying, which unfortunately we can't do anything about. If I go back to ranking by impressions, the other thing you might want to look at is um, which is the fifth thing that I want you to look at, which is uh, restructuring some of your um, ad groups. So for example, we've got a, a lot of people searching for RLSA. Me, what, we might decide we want to strip this keyword out and put it in its own ad group. Why would we want to do that? So that we can write an ad that talks specifically about RLSA, which is what I have already done here. I have an ad group called RLSA that talks specifically um, about it. And I did this after this date range, so uh, it, it's not showing up. But really that's why we would do that because ideally your job is to match the search term with the right ad and sending them to the right place. So this is telling me that lots of people are searching for help with RLSA. So ideally I want an ad that talks about, I've got tutorials about how to do retargeting lists for search ads, which is what RLSA stands for. Okay. So the next thing we want to look at is our ad performance. So if we, let's just click on one of our ad groups and then we can go to ads and then we can see here, let's just minimize this a little bit. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, if we scroll across, what we're really looking for here is a comparison in performance. Okay. So, we look at click-through rate here. So this particular ad gets a um, has got a lower click-through rate, but it didn't get as many impressions. So it's got less impressions, but it's had a lower click-through rate, but it looks like it's converted much higher, but really not enough data to look at. I would wait till you have about 100 clicks on each before you start making decisions. Okay, so you definitely want to compare the performance of your ads as well. All right. So let's go back to our keywords. The next thing you want to look at are keywords which are below first page bid. All right. So here we can see that we've got some keywords which Google's telling us that we're not bidding enough to be on the first page. So we're here, we're only bidding $2.10, but to be on the first page, we need to bid, oh, sorry about this, uh, $5.35. All right. So we need to make a decision. Do we want to be on the first page? Because even bidding below first page, we're still getting impressions. So you might think it's not worth it. So often what we will do is we will, if it's still getting impressions, we let that run for a little bit to find the negative keywords. And then we can make a strategic decision. Are we prepared to spend $5 on a click, which is definitely high. All right. And actually at the end of this video, I'm going to go through how you can change bid strategy. But first I want to show you the next thing which you want to look at, which is quality score. So if quality score is not showing up in your columns, which mine isn't, you can easily change your columns, modify columns, go to uh, it is here, quality score, and we can incorporate quality score as one of our columns. 
And quality score is a number between 1 and 10, which is Google's way of telling us if they're happy with our keyword. All right. So 1 being the worst and 10 being the best. And the quality score number is based on three factors. The first is click-through rate. The second is ad relevance. And the third is landing page experience. So if you're unsure which of those three factors is driving up or down your quality score, if we go back to our columns, Google it will tell us, which is quite a new thing, which is nice. So uh, we can go to our expected click-through rate, landing page experience and ad relevance and it will tell us if we scroll across what's below average and what's above average so here is telling us our click-through rate is is below average so really we just need to write better ad copy which will improve our quality score and the effect of that will be that we pay less for a cost per click which will be fantastic all right so that is definitely the next thing that I want you to look at. And as promised, the last thing I wanted to show you, which is how to change bid strategy. So you change, um, you have a choice to make when you run, sorry, I'm just going back up a level. Um, so here you can see I was doing manual bidding. And then at this point, I made a note where I switched to maximize conversions, which is Google's automated bidding. And then we started to get sales here. All right. So um, you have a choice to make of do you do manual bidding where you decide what your maximum cost per click is? Or do you hand over the bidding range to Google and let Google decide? There are a number of different bid strategies and in the link in the description, I'm going to create a link to a video that I've made on the different bid strategies, but you change it at a campaign level at the settings. And if you um, don't really have many conversions in your account, what I would suggest you do is to, I'm going to change bid strategy. I would start with maximize conversions. All right. And then once you're getting conversions under your belt, then you can set a target cost per acquisition, which is still Google's automated bidding, but you're telling Google, this is my goal to get leads or, or sales at. So I might set my target cost per acquisition at $50 because I'm that that's my target uh, cost per lead as per the first step in the video. And Google will be focused on achieving sales at that level. So I'm just going to start with maximize conversions and I click save and then it will get me, it will, it will strive to get me as many conversions uh, for my budget. But then the goal, as I said, is to migrate towards uh, target CPA bidding as well. Okay. And actually, if I change this conversions and if we change the date range to be, let's say here, just to show you real quick do this uh, we were doing maximized conversions here and you can see infinitely better results when we were doing and the cost per conversion came down and conversion rates gone up and um, yeah so definitely much better uh, performance when we made the switch to maximize conversions and then the next step would be to do target CPA bidding as well so there you have it. Those are the steps you need to take in order to optimize your Google search campaign. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.